so we're back. We're yep. back for 2024. Yeah, back for 2024. Bit later getting back than what we normally are. We normally um, get back on the road straight after the January school holidays. Because she's had me working. <laughs> I've been doing all the auto electrical part of the um, We've got the new field. canopy on the mm. Ranger. Yeah, I don't work fast. We're back. Mm. So um, we're in Merriwar at the moment and we're going to be heading south, ultimately getting to South Australia. So we won't be doing much touristy stuff on the way down, but we'll show you the campsites we stay at. So Certainly will. Yeah, come along for the drive. Stay tuned. This is the Merry War Silo. Every June long weekend they have a um, running of the fleeces festival in Merry War. So you can see there the sheep have red socks on. That's pretty cool. We'd love to get here one June long weekend for that. So our lunch stop today is hot cross buns. Mm. <laughs> you know, Christmas is over, don't you, when the hot cross buns come in the shop? So this is the town of Dunny Doo that we've stopped to have our hot cross buns. And we often stop in, stop in Dunny Doo because they've got an awesome bakery with really nice pies. We reckon they're up there with some of the best in Australia. But today is Sunday, so I plan the hot cross buns. Glenn's just ducked off to the toilet, so don't tell him, shh, I've just noticed. The bakery's got an open sign on it. Shh, don't let on. So this is the silo art in Dunny Doo. The racehorse winks. I think he must have come from around here. It's been really warm today and I've been getting some lightning strikes over that silo. So there's a storm on its way. And that's around the other side of the silo black swans, the sheep, and the canola. And here comes my lift. So we've arrived at our first stop for the night. It's pub camp in Wongarbon. Wongarbon, yes. Which is just outside of Dubbo. We're in this big paddock here, the pub there across the road. Sweet little pub. But. We might miss out on pub grub. <laughs> we found it. on a pie. You poor thing, yeah. you have. He found out he missed out on a pie. And we've arrived Sunday and they don't do Sunday dinner. So, as I said before, it's been really hot today. So we're gonna go over and have a couple of cold drinks anyway, so. It's a terrible situation. <laughs> it's shocking. Yeah. It's a pub that looks like a house. The Ploughman's in in Mongarbon. There's motor racing on in the pub. So he had to get the closest seat so we can hear it. <laughs> We left our pub camp last night and we've driven down through Forbes, very RV friendly town Forbes, but we've stopped here at this Goanna sculpture. He's really cool and there's a wetlands here. Last time we were here, there weren't any bird hides, but apparently there's now bird hides here at the wetlands. Four of them. Four? Oh, you'll be in your element. Overset and still. Wood ducks, sea eagles, and spoonbill. So we're going to have a little break here. We might have some lunch after we've had a look around. It's a great little sculpture trail around this area. We have done it before, so we might put up, put up some pictures for you of some of the others. Because we're driving straight through the Newell Highway, we've just stopped off at this one. But there's lots more to do around the Forbes area. It's a really nice RV-friendly town. 
here he is, the goanna. You really can't imagine how tall he is till you come here. Last time we were here, we did a drone shot with me standing under him. So I might pop that in just to show you how huge he is. is a premier bird watching site in New South Wales. It's quite an impressive structure. 2022 they were built. Two story by the looks of it. I've just been bitten by something on the ramp. <laughs> I might have to go back to the car and get something to put on this, Glen. Oh, this is the best stuff. It's at the front. Because we use it a lot. Soothe spray. I like the spray better than the oh creams it's easy to apply it gets a big surface i think it was a bee or a wasp or something i saw it fly away right the sting's gone out already i can take the walk back and meet him back at the bird height hope that little bugger's flown away the first one only had pigeons and was it welcome swallows Glenn? yeah welcome so we're off to the second one. See if we can find something a bit more exciting. You have to be very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. You've got a spare battery? I have got a spare battery. All the better for bird spotting. To go with my new your little secret pouch. Secret pouch. Got some magpie geese. And over the back we have got some pink eared ducks, which are nice to see. And ibises. They're everywhere. Yeah, well they're not the usual bin chicken type. I thought there was only one type. No, there's several. There's the Royal Ibis, which is the white ones that we tend to see. The bin chickens. The bin chickens, yeah. And there's, I think, straw coloured. There's all the spoonbills through there. No, no bird hide near them. This is our next campsite in Ardlethan, New South Wales. Great little community run campsite with parking both sides of the park down the road here, the park opposite. But the bonus with this campsite is that they have power $2 for 12 hours. So another really hot day today. Go and pay for our power, $2 for 12 hours.
going through a little town called Barellan on the way to Griffith. They've got the big tennis racket. So apparently she was born in Griffith and grew up in Barellan. Yvonne Goulagong, big tennis racket in Barellan. I found ourselves a dirt road. Pretty lumpy and bumpy in parts. We're on the other side of the Murrumbidgee River. So we should be on the highway, but the river's in the way. So we've got to travel this dirt road. <laughs> we found a great free camp at Hay on the river, Murrumbidgee. We finally got the Murrumbidgee River. But there's a few big dips to get through. But he'll be right, he's on his way in. Looks like a beautiful spot. Very happy with this find. Soapworks Bend. Nice little camp spot here at Soapwork Bend. It's beautiful. But there is a walk we found out about around a lagoon with lots of birds. So we're on our way to check that out. Doesn't look very clean this part of the river. We've been weaving around the tracks and we found the long drop toilets. They're not maintained. So, so I think we'll use our own in the caravan. I don't know if they expect anybody to use that. You are told to be self-contained if you come here, so that's why. It's still hot. We've had several really hot days. Look what my clever man has set up for me. Or for yeah. us. For <laughs> me. Okay, it is above your chair. Yeah. <laughs> that's our ceiling fan. So just got it strung across there, plugged into the 12 volt on the side of the van. Very nice, thank you, doll. Thank me. Yep. yep. Just outside the visitor centre, there's a Cobb & Co coach in the glass room there. Yep. This is in the main street of Hay, come for a look. There's a sheep here with a saddle on the back. <laughs> How often do you ride a sheep? This sheep's reading a book. Yeah. Whether weather or weather. Or you. You or You're having a spelling lesson. Oh. No, there's you as in you. You as in you. Or you as in sheep. There's so many interesting buildings in town, in Hay, but this one has us baffled with all those green flaps at the bottom. It's now the Lands Office. This is a beautiful old one. This is the courthouse. It's open on Mondays and Tuesdays only, so we've missed out on having a look through there. Another friendly gentleman just giving his directions and advice. Off he goes. Everyone in Hay has been so friendly. They're all saying good morning and they see we're tourists and they give us tips on things to see. So this is the one that gentleman was telling us about, the convent. This is the water tower art in Hay. It's Lieutenant Lorna White and Corporal Clifford Farlow. They've got really complex stories here to read about them. Both very interesting stories 
and we should be proud of what they did for us. Well, look at that. I spent so much time around the other side reading those complex stories, only just realised there's more around the back. And what's really sad here, they were all captured and became prisoners of war. We're packing up, getting ready to move on from this lovely campsite we found here at Hay. Um, today it is forecast to be 43 degrees. So we're moving on to Mildura and we think we might find somewhere with a pool. That's what we're hoping anyway. We're heading to the shade. 43 degrees and it's here at 43 degrees. So we actually had planned to stay overnight here, Lake Benini. But the heat has got us. We're going to try and find somewhere with a pool to stay instead. But look at that, the lake's full. And it's a nice big area. It would be a nice place to camp. Just driving out of the Benini rest stop. And there's, oh, there's, and um, there's a nice sandy beach and everything. Turn left onto Sturt Highway. Oh, shush. <laughs> um, so yes, it would have been a lovely place to stay, but we're gonna move on. Well, we found somewhere with a pool. So we've been in and cooled off. But look how perfect it is, because if I spin around, spin, Glenn. Spin. Spin, spin, spin. I'm not spinner. <laughs> There's us. There's us. Look at that. Our site is directly opposite the pool. So we might even go in again later. Finish setting up now. So we got a lovely cool change yesterday, dropping the temperature today to the 20s, which is really nice. So we can explore around Mildura comfortably. We're at the Mildura Homestead to start with today. disappointing not many red cliffs it's a nice look out of the river but yeah there were the red cliffs back where we were where you couldn't get past the fence through the fence is the only way to get the view of the red cliffs well that's a better view but we had to walk through the fence. This is the caravan we chose to stay at while staying at Mildura. As you can see, it's beautiful and green. Beautiful green grass, sprinklers on all the unused sites. That's us there. The pool behind us. It's at Red Cliffs, which is about 10 minutes out of Mildura. And it's the kind of park we like if we're going to stay in a park. Just a little park. It had a pool, which is the main reason we came. Not very crowded and large sites. It's funny, yesterday I was cutting Glenn's hair and its gray hair was dropping all over the green grass. And I felt so bad because the, the grass is so beautiful that I picked it up with the brush and dustpan. I wouldn't dare leave it on this lovely green grass. Here we are in South Australia. Yay! Ooh. Or actually in Victoria. Huh? We're just about <laughs> on our way to Renmark after we've left Mildura. Yep. We'll see you there. Okay. Well, we've gone through South Australia and I'm probably, I'm feeling a bit stupid. 
bit, bit, bit dumb. Um, we disposed of all our fruit. We did the right thing, disposed of all our fruit before we went into Mildura with all the signs. I bought some grapes in Mildura and kept my receipt um, and came through the inspection station and they checked. She asked, did I have any fruit? I said, yes. Um, we purchased it after disposing it in Mildura and uh, you're not allowed to do that. So we passed all the signs, you know, dump your fruit. But I was thinking back years ago when you used to be able to buy it after dumping it in one spot if you had a receipt that she said they got rid of that years ago. So it's a learning curve. Um, I've had my interview, had my license photographed, um, photographed the fruit, um, had body cam interviews, so it's all been videoed, and it goes to some committee that decide if I will get a fine. She asked um, whose fruit it was. Obviously, it's for us, um, but because I purchased it, I use my license and we'll have to wait and see. So, live and learn, don't you? Um, you know, I suppose you'll say I'm stupid because there's plenty of signs that say dump your fruit, but we did dump the fruit. <laughs> but um, that wasn't good enough. I thought the Riverina was the Riverina. Yeah, I thought that's, that's yeah, the Riverina area. That's what we thought, but it was fruit fly for the whole Riverina area, which includes Mildura and Redmark, where we're going. But, yeah. um, so we'll have to let you know on that, whether there's a fine or not. <laughs> Yuck. So we've arrived at our next campsite in Redmark, and I'm just, I'm feeling embarrassed, a bit stupid, and just, it's just made me feel a bit flat. Like, really, I... I was stupid but can't do anything about it it's a shame it's put a little bit of a downer on it initially at this nice new site I'm sure I'll be right in an hour or so I'm just still a bit <sighs> why did I do that um, so we're at Plusher's Bend campground um, so this is $10 a night um, on the river and they're bookable online so we've got campsite number two Two, I think it is down there on the river and it's almost empty it's a lovely little place so nice place to relax <sighs> take a deep breath this is further down past our designated camping sites at Plusher's Bend boat ramp here so down this end there's sandy entry too to the water so this is the other end, the RV park. It's about 700 metres from our site. Um, yeah, you can see on the map here, there's up on the top left sites one and two, we're in two. And then, yeah, you go past all the 15 individual sites till you get to these here, which are unallocated sites. camp we've moved to is only about 40 minute drive from our last one at Plusher's Bend. We've set up, it's worked out well that we've arrived early because we're at the historic Overland Corner Hotel and they are only open for lunch today. 
so we're in time to go and um, have a pub lunch. The pub was built in 1859. It served as a stagecoach uh, staging area between New South Wales and Adelaide. It was de-licensed in 1898 and became a general store and post office for many years. Then in 1855, what it happened? became a police station. <laughs> Been a bit of everything, hasn't it? Yeah, blacksmiths and a wheelwright shop. Wow, so, blacksmiths too. Yeah, and sometimes 30,000 sheep grazed near the river. Hmm. So that quarry that we showed you earlier, that was all dug out up the back. The, just yeah just through that gate there the publican told us earlier that that's where they dug all of the stone to build the pub limestone. Yeah. so it's um it's limestone that they dug out to build this old building so and this is the oldest building in the region it could even be i think it's bigger bigger than the region it's pretty bloody old anyway beautiful place to visit Now's the time to wrap this episode up. You've followed us along from Mary War in New South Wales, and now that we're in South Australia, we're going to wrap it up for you here. Mm. So um, we thought we would be just showing you campsites along the way because we didn't do much. We didn't think we were going to do much touristy stuff, um, and we ended up showing you a little bit more than what we thought. So you got to see some campsites, a few good things to see along the way. What not to do at the border. <laughs> Yeah, I've been beating myself up about that. But I've got to just move on and enjoy South Australia from, yep. from now on. So um, our next episode, we think we're going to head down around the York Peninsula. Yeah. So, yeah, there'll be some nice stuff to show you down that way as well. So well, thanks hit, for watching. Hit the water. It's starting to get hot inland. Well, it's always been hot. Yeah, this whole episode's hot. Yeah, been hot. It's been a hot episode, yes. <laughs> All right, so thanks for watching. Hope like and subscribe, it. please. Thank you. That's a great help if you do that. And we'll see you on the next episode. And ding the bell.